Hello, I am Erica Johnson, Director of the University of New Hampshire Interoperability Laboratory. We are an ISO 17025 accredited testing laboratory for the USG V6 test program. Today, we are going to review how to complete a USG V6 SDOC or Supplier's Declaration of Conformity. Open up a browser and browse to the USG V6 test program website. On the home page, you can see on the left hand side a tab for SDOC. Once clicked, you can see and download the template here. Make sure to download the latest template every time a new SDOC is created. This ensures that you're using the latest version. Once downloaded, you will see there are four worksheet tabs, Product Summary, Stack 1 Doc, Stack 1 Notes, and How to Complete. Open the Product Summary Worksheet tab. All fields on this tab must be completed. The Product ID is a short ID that will be used throughout this SDOC. Next, you will fill out your supplier's name, address, and contact details. Following, you will fill out the product as tested and declared. This must match the hardware and software that was tested at an ISO 17025 accredited laboratory. In my example, my server, I have tested my server 1001 with software version 2.5. Next, I may list the product family or series that uses the same IPv6 stack. In my example, I used my server 1000 2000 and 3000 series. All products use unmodified IPv6 stack version 2.5. Next is where you list the USG v6 capability summary. In my example, my server is a USG v6 one host testing 100% pass for IPv6 base, address architecture, IPsec, IKEV2, and using a link equals Ethernet. Next, we will fill out 7, 8, and 9. 7 answers the question, is this a self-contained SDOC or are there composites? Clicking yes here indicates that all test results are included in this original SDOC for your stack. However, if you have not completed the test results yourself, but have used a other component that has their own unique USG v6 SDOCs, you would answer yes here. In my example, my server has completed all its original testing and included the test IDs in this SDOC. So I'm going to click yes here and no here. If you had clicked yes, for a composite SDOC, all component supplier details must be filled out in number eight. Since my server includes all original test results, I can leave eight blank. Number nine includes three attestations. All of these must be answered. The first attestation indicates that your IPv6 stack works in an IPv6 only environment. This means that all your claiming functions operate as stated when turning IPv4 off. The next attestation claims that the capabilities for each unique IPv6 stack are stated in this SDOC. That is, you do not have a stack on your product that is V4 only. Next, you are attesting that your product series listed in number five are all using the same IPv6 stack unmodified, in my case, version 2.5. Next, you will need to sign, date, and print your contact name. 
Next, open up the Stack One Doc Worksheet. This worksheet, you will fill out the product ID, again using my example, my server, and now adding a stack ID. In my case, it's version 2.5. This will also be used throughout the rest of the SDOC. Here you will indicate which capabilities you have 100% passed, whether or not you have any notes, or if that capability is not supported. Under host, I will put a pass for basic Slack, address architecture, IPsec, IKEV2, and DNS server. Where indicated a pass, you will need to show a test lab ID and a test lab for each test suite that is available under the USG v6 test program. The test suites will be listed in the SDOC template. For example, basic version 1.x underscore conformance and underscore interoperability are available. You must indicate a test lab and result ID for this protocol. In my example, I have tested at the UNH-IOL with a result ID of 1111. The result ID was given to me by my test lab. Now I can complete my Slack result. This will be repeated for as many capabilities as I'm claiming in this SDOC. Now, for a DNS server, I've claimed a pass. There is no applicable test specification available under the USG v6 test program. This is indicated by a self-test italic note. Thus, I may put self-test in self-test in the conformance and interoperability section rather than in a lab or a test result ID. You do not have to have any evidence of the test specification. This can be done in your own internal QA process. Next, I will designate AN for note under DHCP server. This indicates that I support this capability. However, I might not support 100% pass or have supported the profile requirements. Next, I will indicate a pass for link equals Ethernet and designate a self-test in both conformance and interoperability. Since I'm designating a note for DHCP server, I will indicate an X, box number 12. This tells the buyer that they need to look at the Stack 1 Notes worksheet page to see a complete detail of the note. If you have no notes to declare, you may leave box 12 blank. Next, move to the Stack 1 Notes worksheet. Here you will include the product ID and stack ID. You will include every note that was declared in the Stack 1 doc worksheet. In my example, I have one note for DH, DHCP server. I include the specification or reference, RFC 3315, the section number of the spec, the profile requirements, in my case, the server message exchange, the context or configuration option, DHCP server. This can be found in the nodes requirement table in the profile. Supported capabilities is for a host, and the test suite is self-test, and there is no test lab result ID as it was a self-test. Next, I will include a brief discussion of the problem that was found that I would like to declare to the buyer. The DHCP server does not properly process a decline message. There is no more notes that I need to include to complete this SDOC. Next, you can go to the how-to guide for more information and details on how to complete the SDOC. Once completed, you may now use this for all of your U.S. government buyer's requirements.
The SDOC may be secured by saving as a PDF. Thank you for your time. If you have further questions, please contact me at erica.johnson at iol.unh.edu. version 2.0.